This is a Jenny. The 70s was the most interesting period because so many different things were happening. 1973 in particular was a great time of change in the music industry. Musical forms that we eventually call punk, disco, and hip-hop all had at their origins that year in New York City. The birth of hip-hop really is about the evolution of DJing. So even before hip-hop was called hip-hop, you had DJs like Cool Herc who started changing the way DJs presented music. Coming from Harlem, growing up in the Bronx, I kept on hearing a person by the name of Herc, Herc, Herc. You start hearing obscure sounds that's a little different from what you heard in the discos or you heard on the radio that had like a funky sound, a funky beat. Herc figured out a way of taking the best parts of individual records and repeating them over and over. And that became the foundation of hip hop where you had DJs isolating the breaks. You feeling what I'm making, right? I don't know that you're making anything, but I do think that you're trying. He was cutting it up and dissecting these classic tracks, James Brown, the incredible bongo band, and finding these rhythms that was unusual to hear them repeated. He was the first one to do it. Damn! See that? And why you have to go fuck it up? They would use disco records, rock records, jazz records, funk records, anything. And that's really one of the most beautiful things about, about what hip hop at that point was. Anything was fair game. 73 specifically was the year of Cool Herc's first hip hop party before hip hop was even a, a thing up in the Bronx. They would get too big for a venue, a rec room, and they would take it to the parks and they would take the turntables, set them up in the parks. I got to acknowledge and see our very first Cool Herc party. Not just the music, but the whole vibe and the notion of what was going on built around this gentleman, Cool Herc. When Herc was doing this, it was really revolutionary. You know, you're talking about music that you couldn't hear anywhere else, and you're talking about a presentation that you couldn't find anywhere else. So word got around, and he really had people going nuts at these parties. And the speakers got bigger and bigger, and the parties got bigger and bigger, and the sound came from the street and made it to the airwaves. Hey, man, what is this place? Music. DJs are the ones that brought back a lot of the, the coolness of vinyl, I think, because when you go to see a DJ, it's kind of cool the guy is like flipping the 12 inch, you know, he's got it in his hand. It's, there's something to be said for this tangible thing, you know. You know, when hip hop isn't really documented the way I think other genres of music are. So for me, as, as someone who is a part of the culture, I really wanted to make sure they get it right. We have costumes, hair, makeup, props, but to have somebody who's really in the know can really pull everything together, put that authentic edge on it. You know, we're using equipment from that era. If you look at his headphones, they're, they're of that era. The set is incredible. I mean, they've transformed this gym into a early 1970s rec room. It's crazy to walk into that set. It's really like, you know, stepping into another era. Fantastic. It was a really special time that made New York really the center of the music world for hip-hop, which continued through the 90s. 